In nasal examination, one of the most important thing is that you will have to examine the external nose while the light is switched off. The patient presents with the concern of aesthesis. So your light should not be on while examining the external nose. First of all, inspect the nose. Inspect the nose, the shape of the nose. Inspect it from the front, whether the, no uh, the nose is crooked or it's straight, whether it's deviated or not. Then examine the nose from the side. Side, side direction. Look for any hump, whether there is any hump or not. Look for any hump. See the direction. Then look for the nostrils, whether the nostrils are equal or not columella. You need to look for the columella. Then you have to stand up and look at the patient from the head end. You will have to look the patient from the head end. You have to examine that the glabella or the nasion is lying in line with the tip of the nose. Then you have to come back and sit down. When you have examined the shape of the nose, you are going to look for any scar marks. You are going to look for any surgery marks. You are going to look for any swellings. Inspection do you have to proceed with palpation. In palpation, you are simply going to gently palpate the nose from above till the tip of the nose and you are going to gently palpate the dorsum of the nose. You are going to look for any crepitus if there is any present or any swelling or any tenderness. The next step of examination is that you have to again switch on the light and you are going to examine the nose using digital examination. Now remember in digital examination, you have to use your non-dominant hand. You are simply going to ask the patient to look a little above and you are simply going to pull the tip of the nose and look at the external nares. Then the next step is anterior rhinoscopy. Anterior rhinoscopy is done by thidicum. For thidicum it is very much important that it should be always held in the non-dominant hand. Never pick it up with your dominant hand and never shift it in your hands. Always pick it up in your dominant, uh, non-dominant hand. If you are a left-handed uh, doctor, you have to explain your position to the examiner. Always pick it up with the left hand, held it in between the index finger and take your middle finger above and compress it between in the middle and fourth finger and put your thumb over here for support. This is how you are going to pick a thidicum. You have picked the thidicum, simply ask the patient to look above and insert it in the nose like this and open the nose examine the nose then simply close it mid close it and take it out remember this while inserting the thidicum it should be closed like this and then opened over here but while taking it out it should not be closed completely and it might pull some hair out uh, now, there are multiple ways to insert the thidicum. Usually, some people prefer to insert it toward like this. Some people try to prefer it like this, completely straight. But the best way is to insert it in a little bit perpendicular, a little bit angled over here so that the nose can expand over here and you can have a better view. You are not going to damage the septum, it may not cause pain, and you can easily expand the nose and you can watch it better remember for left side you are not going to change the hands you are still going to use your non-dominant hand and you are simply going to insert and ask the patient to look above and simply going to rotate it like this and examine the nose you are not going to change your hand you are going to use the non-dominant hand you are going to keep a little bit angled and you are going to look for the nose you are simply going to mid close it and take it out why do we use the non-dominant hand? The purpose of using the non-dominant hand is that you have to use another instrument that is called as Jobson Horn Probe as I already explained in the air instruments. You simply put a gauze over here and whenever you take the thidicum and you insert it in the nose, if there is a mass, you simply just insert it and probe the mass with the Jobson Horn Probe. Remember, do not probe any bleeding mass. The most important step is posterior rhinoscopy. Always remember that you have always to explain the procedure to uh, the patient because posterior rhinoscopy is considered as a very dreadful or frightful condition of uh, examination and the patient usually uh, tries to avoid it. So you have to explain the procedure to the patient and then you are going to proceed with posterior rhinoscopy. Procedure to the patient, then you have to warm up the mirror. You warm up the mirror. 
After you warm up the mirror, you take a gauze and you simply clear this mirror side or both sides. Then you put the other side of the mirror on your hand to show the patient that it's not very warm and it's not going to burn anything. Then you put it on the hand of the patient to gain his confidence. Then you take a tongue depressor, very much important, you take a tongue depressor, you ask the patient to open his mouth, you put the tongue depressor on your left hand and you simply insert and look for anything posteriorly in the nose. As usual, as we examine in the air, we are going to examine the nose physiology. Now, there are two purposes of the nose. The first purpose is breathing, the other is smell. So, you will have to examine the breathing first. For breathing, you can do two types of tests. The first test is you can put, you are going to take a metallic blade and ask the patient to breathe on it. Sounds right? And you are going to look for fumes forming over the metallic blade. The next test is you are going to, this is called as the cotton test. You are simply going to ask the patient to breathe. Um, If the patient feels resistance, you can also do the cotyl test. In the cotyl test, you simply pull the cheek and ask the patient to breathe. If the patient says his breathing is improved, it means there is some issue in the internal nasal valve. One of the most important tests is the smell test. You should have any fragments in your pocket, as usually it is asked in the exam. Take a fragment, anything that is uh, having fragments, and close one nostril and ask the patient to breathe and ask him if he can feel the smell then you have to do it on the other side after each and every nasal examination it is very much important to examine the lymph nodes also as